All right, great. All right, thanks everyone for being here today. First off, I'd like to congratulate our women's gymnastics team on a successful season. Um, and want to wish them all the best at the regionals this week. Coach Rose has been doing a great job. I was able to go by and watch practice uh, or talk to them after practice. And uh, he and his staff have done a phenomenal job. want to wish them all the best. Going to our third week of spring practice, um, I like what I see so far. We had a chance to scrimmage on, uh, on a Saturday and get some live tackling in. And I thought we had really, really good effort, really good intensity. The guys moved around well and uh, you know we're just working to get better every day the aggregation of marginal gains it's every single guy just getting a little bit better every single day and uh, focusing on the process and so far the attitude has been has been good and the guys have been doing that on and off the field the meetings have been great we're getting a lot of work in situational work special teams work and I'm really uh, impressed with the with the staff and with the players and uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep chopping, keep working, keep, keep working at it. Um, that's about it. I'll just open up for questions. I've lost my voice a little bit, so if you need me to speak up, just let me know. Now, well, once again, obviously some new faces in the game this year. Maybe not quite as many as last year, but how are they adding to this? A lot of veteran guys adding to like the atmosphere, the competition, all that. How have they fit in? They're fitting in well, and it's adding to the competition. At at the positions, we have you know more guys that are capable of, of having significant roles, and so there's a lot of competition to uh, you know there's going to be a lot of competition to get on the field, and which is good. It's going to make everyone everyone better. Well, most of our most of our players. They already know how to practice, and so um, we don't have to spend as much time teaching guys how to practice in the spring. And so we're further ahead in that in that regard. Um, and uh, anyway, we also know our players a lot better. Now. The guys who are returning, um, you know, we we uh, we just know we've been through a season with these guys. And then a whole nother out of season conditioning program. So it just helps with our ability to coach the guys um, and give them what they need. You talk about losing your voice. Obviously, the intensity is a big factor, especially here in spring ball. Um, I, I guess er, early on in your, your career here, are these practices maybe a little more intense than they have been, or, or has that been kind of a maybe that creates the whole mind? Well, they're, you know, they're, they're always intense. And I only raise my voice to enthusiasm, so it's. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the guys are the guys are. It's intense. There's a sense of urgency. There's a lot of attention to detail. Um, you know, we're 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 teaching mental and physical toughness, and uh, you know, and it's just a. It's a. The, I mean, the urgency is there to get better, and we don't we don't have time to waste, and uh, and so you know we're we're getting after it. The coaches are getting after it. The players are getting after it. You know, it's, just, it's very intense. Now, what have you seen with Brandon Jordan the first couple of weeks working with him? And have you seen some results already in the pass rush area? Yeah, B. Jordan is, is doing a great job. And uh, we are getting some getting some, uh, some rush. And we're making some improvements with the inside guys and the outside guys with just the approach. And he and Coach Coleman working together is a, is a strong it's a strong tandem there, and uh, very good coaches. But I like what I, I've seen so far. Uh, he's a he's a teacher. He's a teacher, and the players um, they're they're listening. He's 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 captured their attention. I saw you had this NFL guys up here. Did your guys get a chance to see any of that? They were kind of wide eyed, or did you want them seeing that? Were they able to? Like I'm not sure how much our guys um, saw that because I, I wasn't down there. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of a lot of NFL guys in here, and um, you know, getting work in. It's all about the work. You know, at, at every level, it's about the work you put in to getting better at your craft. What's it like for you too when you hear guys start to say your sayings? I know that you like a player coach team more than a coach mm -hmm. coach team. So to see that these guys are using aggregation of marginal gains, compete to stay, or to compete to play, to compete to stay, etc. 
how does that kind of reinforce what you're building here? Well, that, that talk that uh, speaks to the buy-in and the players are listening and they understand um, what, what, we, uh, what we're saying. They understand the message. It's just not, it's just not uh, words on the wall or slogans for them to be able to, to, uh, to kind of give it back to us or, or repeat it to you. That means they actually understand it and they, they understand the context and what it means and when it should be applied. It's important because it's, that's part of our culture. You know, the things that we talk about, um, you know, that's how we live and behave every day, and that's, that's what I define as culture. And so when you have guys that have already been here, when they can, we can all speak the same language, and they can all also, like, teach that to the new guys, and the guys help those guys to understand it, and those, those new guys, they understand it, and they can repeat it back, then that means that, you know, the buy-in is, is there quickly. Um, and then we can move forward as a team together. Well, it's it's very good competition because no one is is promised a starting job. You, they, they're going to get what they earn at the corner spot and, and everywhere else. Um, but you know they, they're making they're making each other better. And uh, they're learning from each other, you know, good and bad. And what I like about the group is, you know, we don't have we don't have haters in the room. I mean, guys are working to help. They're working to help each other get better, even though they're competing against one another, which is which is a sign of a a good cohesive unit. Um, and at the end of the day, we're going to need all of them anyway to be able to play at a high level. And so, uh, it's a I like the way the group is working. Um, you know, Coach Barnett is doing a great job with the with the entire secondary, um, and then you know I'm I'm helping out with the corners uh, as much as I possibly can. Um, you know, because it, it, they are the corners and safeties. That's a different they're different positions, and Coach Els is doing a great job coaching the nickels. He's coaching all of the special teams, um, and then he's also coaching the nickels, and the the nickel the nickel position is very similar to a linebacker position. And so, uh, so they're getting they're getting uh, very specialized coaching uh, by position. Amir talked about it last week about when he got here. Guys asked him a lot about winning the national team, mm -hmm. championship. How important is to kind of speak about those things and believe that it can happen? Do you see that kind of rubbing off on guys that more of that belief and talking about that belief that that is something that can be attained? Well, you know, why not us? I mean, of course it can be attained, but it's, it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of hard, hard work. And when you have, you have people in the organization who have actually done it and knows what it looks like, then that helps because, uh, you know, there's, a, there's certain things you have to do to get to that, to that, get to that level and get, get to that point where you have an opportunity to play for a national championship. And it's part of the process. And Amir, um, you know, he knows, he knows that process. He knows it inside and out. Can you talk about Scotty working with some of the linebackers, what they bring to the table, and why you decided to make them? Yeah, Scotty's an outstanding linebackers coach. He's just a ball coach. He can coach any position out there. Um, but um, with him coaching linebackers, I feel like that's his wheelhouse, and uh, and so he's he, he I mean he's going to, he's doing a, he's doing a great job there. He's got a lot of experience. He's done it at the college level and the NFL level, and uh, and so that's allowing. You know us to have BT and, and Marco in the front, and then you know Coach Els. With Coach Els, he coaches all of the special teams. A lot of staffs you'll see, and you know we've done it. I've done it in the past where you know you might have a special teams coach, but like one coach has kickoff, another coach has kickoff return, and another coach has punt, another coach has punt return. Well, he's coaching all of them, um, and then the nickels, and, um, and with his with his experience coaching linebackers and the nickel position is. It has a lot of similarities. That's a really good. That's a really good spot for him. So it's really benefiting benefiting our players, to because they're getting more specialized uh, coaching, uh, more attention to detail, um, and just it's uh, it's just more just it's more it's a more, more focused approach to what we're doing, and and uh, they're getting better a lot faster. So before when Nicole worked with. 
defensive backs? Is yeah. Different now, or yeah. Yeah. Because the nickels, um, you know, they're they're defensive backs, so they'll work with they'll work with the defensive back coaches, and and they still do, because we have guys that play multiple positions. We have some corners that play nickel as well, and so there's crossover. So we have to we have to organize our practices, organize our meetings to make sure that that no one um, falls through the cracks. And so we have a very cohesive staff and we communicate. And we, you know, sometimes Coach Ells is with me. We're meeting together with the corners because those, those corners are playing, um, those corners are playing nickel as well. Sometimes they're meeting separately. Sometimes we meet together as a, as a, as a secondary. Um, but a lot of times, uh, you know, Coach, Coach uh, Barnett has the safeties and I'll have the corners. Coach Ells has the nickels. We're doing that, and sometimes you know we we do we do what we need to do based upon the, the install and how many corrections we have, and what type of corrections, and the uh, who who needs the most attention. So I mean, it's just a, it's a work in progress, but I really like um, the direction that we're headed. How do you feel as though the guys are adjusting to Markel I think that I think they are. I mean, it's it's an adjustment period because um, I think they're adjusting well. But, because you know he's got a different style of coaching, he's got a different personality, and and uh, so the players have to adjust, and he's got to learn. He's got to learn the players as well. Um, but he, you know, he's, he has really good interpersonal skills. He cares about the players. He's very knowledgeable. He's he's uh, he's coached it at a high level. He's he's played it at a high level, and the player the players are listening. And he has their attention. With that first scrimmage in the spring, were there any particular players that maybe stood out to you? Or no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there was a, anyone that stuck out to me, um, like in particular. Um, not you know, not in this past scrimmage, but you know, we'll see as we go. I just thought it was it was good work overall, um, and uh, you know, Coach Coach Cap's got his hands full because we're we're down offensive linemen, um, you know, because of guys have had out of, out of season surgeries and things like that and haven't recovered yet. So we're low on numbers. So some of those guys up there are doing double duty, um, you know, and uh, carrying a carrying a heavy load because of the numbers. And so um, the offense line is, I would say, from uh, from just a strain, having a strain, and a mental toughness standpoint, you know, that they are they're doing a heck of a job. Yep, a lot of guys. I mean, um, you know, Elijah, um, uh, Harold, you know, Berger, um, you know, Prim, Prim is doing a good job. S Simmons, I mean, those guys are all in there. Those guys are all in there working, um, and working hard. Y'all leave anyone out? I mean, we got a stable of guys back there, and they're all competing, you know. Um, and we still have a lot of spring left, and we got the whole summer and, and fall camp, so um, we don't have a, a – you know, there's not a, a, a clear cut, you know, separation with the guys right now, in, in t as far as I'm concerned. Um, but um, the guys are the guys are competing. They're working hard. I would, you know, I wouldn't. Uh, I keep an eye on Prim. I mean, he's a good player. He's tough. When you were when you were recruiting Brown, offense, you know, you think about what you might do for like a spring scrimmage or things like that. Is that Yeah, we'll just have to see, um, you know, because we still have a ways to go. Um, but, you know, we're going to do what we have to do. Whatever we do, it's going to be fast, it's going to be physical. And it's going to be relentless, whatever it is, whatever the format's going to be. We'll, we'll still have to see, though. Uh, can, can you repeat oh, yeah, that for me? Guys have improved from from a year ago, like Noah Kim and and uh, and uh, and uh, I mean, like Noah Kim is Noah Kim has very good arm talent. I mean, like he can he can sling it, 
You know, he's got a strong arm, and he's got more experience, not like game experience, but he's been in the system. He's been coached. He's taken a lot of reps, and I, I see him growing. You know, Hamp Faye, the, the, the same thing. You know, he's been in the system, hadn't been in the games, but um, he's got a lot of reps in practice, and uh, he's getting, a, he's getting a, a lot of, uh, like, a lot of detailed coaching. You know, and, uh, you know, Coach Johnson is a, is a master quarterback's coach. He's coached the position for a long time. He played the position. He is, I mean, he's one of the best that I've been around, if not the best. I mean, the, the guy can coach. Um, I mean, I'm not just talking about a play caller. We know that he can do that. But, I mean, he's talking about coaching the details of the position. And, you know, how's are coming in, a new young guy. I can see him getting better. You know, uh, picking up picking up steam, and uh, you know, and if they can do it in practice, they'll be able to do it in the game because it's very competitive. And you know, there's all you know when you when you don't have a, you don't have guys that have played in games. Um, there's gonna be there's always gonna be some questions about like what do you have back there. But I like what I'm seeing in practice from from those guys, and it's it's really heavy competition. He's, he's been doing a good job. He's uh, he's versatile and he's physical. I mean, the, we put the we had the we put the pads on the first day. We put the pads on, and I saw him come downhill and strike a couple offensive linemen in the ear hole, uh, like a couple times, like back to back. So, I mean, he's going to be uh, be physical in there, and then we know he can run. So, um, and we want to have speed on the field. So, he brings a lot to the table. Yeah, I feel I feel good about those guys. Well, Winmon coming in, Brule coming in, um, Van Sumer is, is, is doing a Van Sumer is doing a good job. I mean, he had a I think that might have been a one-handed interception in the scrimmage. He snag, snagged the ball down in the red zone, and, and and you know took off like a like a rocket. I mean, that guy can run. He's athletic. You know, so uh, you know I, I like what I'm seeing at that at that at that linebacker position. I mean, Cal, the body man. People call him like John Wick. I don't even, I mean, I mean the guy's like, I mean he's, and he's still a young player. He's still a young player, and so he, you know, he's getting better, and so and it, it's very competitive. And the thing I like about this group, though, like it's competitive, but at these positions, but they're, like I said, they're not. It's not a lot of sharp elbows in there. I mean, it's it's it's, it's hyper competitive, but they're all helping each other get better. You know, we're getting better as a team, um, getting better as a unit, and that's 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 important. We're going to need we're going to need everyone. And you know, when you have you know capable linebackers that can run and hit and make and make plays and tackle in space, that really helps your special teams. It really helps your special teams. So you know, the the play of our our special teams should should be elevated as well. He's in the port. He's in the portal. But he's still competing and all that. Yes, yes, sir. That hasn't changed, I guess, is what I'm asking. Not as far as I know. Okay. I'll, I'll check when I go back upstairs. <laughs> anything else? Fred, you got anything no, before we break? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Go green.